Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I'm sitting out here with my Dracaena Draco. I thought this would be a fun plant to talk about. As far as some of my house plants are concerned, this one, it's, it's really high up there. So the Dracaena Dracos, also known as the Dragon's Blood Tree, or just the Dragon Tree, in their native range, which is like Northeast Africa and some outlying islands, these look amazing. They have crazy thick trunks, the most intricate of branching when they flower. It's just a beautiful show and it's supposed to smell wonderful. I've never seen that in person, but oh, how amazing would it be? Like It looks like something from a, a science fiction movie. They don't even look real. Now, growing them as a house plant, it, well, it's not going to get to be like that. I mean, that wouldn't fit in my house, right? They get 20 meters tall, so. That's not happening. But when grown in a pot over time, they still can end up looking really neat. And even at a smaller size like this one, it has some of the characteristics that I'm absolutely crazy about. The main one being the trunk. I mean, the leaves are nice, but it's kind of like the yucca elephantides vibes or like just a ponytail palm. Neat, but it's about the trunk and the branching. Look at that. It's so succulent and full with all those fun lines on it. Again, it looks like something from a cartoon. Kind of reminds me of the Flintstones. It's very smooth and fun to touch. Okay, that's enough of that. Just a cool looking plant. I look forward to the day when this is taller so we can see more of that trunk without the leaves hanging over the front. We can talk some about the growth on this, how to take care of it as a house plant. How you take care of it really is going to vary with where you live and what you want to do with the plant. Typically, these are an extremely drought tolerant plant that are at high risk of drowning if you overwater them. They don't want their roots to be like saturated. I've been giving mine part to full sun during the summertime. In the winter I push it into my garage with the rest of my plants where it gets a good amount of light. I don't water it very much during the winter time. Temperatures are cooler, that's when the risk of rot is a lot higher. Outdoors, when it's nice and warm and it's getting all that light, I give it as much water as I feel like. Which is okay because it's in a potty mix that drains very, very, very well. That's key. Needs to drain well. If it's warm and the soil drains well, you can water them much more. If it's in the house, like 70 degrees, I would be more careful. I'd let these dry out maybe even 50% before watering them just to avoid risk of rot. You know, outdoors when things are hot, we can get away with a lot more. Now, I haven't had this up on drip like I do with a lot of my other plants. It's been getting mostly watered from the rain and then I hand water it about once a week if need be, but I just don't get concerned about overwatering it. Like I said, because I know that soil's draining really well. Never sit in water. It'll rot and die. They don't like that. That's the thing with this plant, right? It's really going to be all about the watering. These do tend to grow fairly slow, but if you live in an area that has a good amount of precipitation and it's warm year round, you have them outside, you could actually get a reasonable sized plant. Whereas opposed to if you're growing as a house plant, it might get a you know a few inches of growth out of it. And that's about it. If you live someplace that's really dry and arid, probably going to be about the same, more than a few inches, but still not much. They grow like snails where it's hot and dry, hot and wet with well-drained soil still get a nice sizable plant fairly quickly. During the summer, I fertilize it with a quarter strength all-purpose fertilizer. In the spring, I just do a light top dressing, very light top dressing of some compost on top of the roots. Could use some slow release probably, but no, I haven't messed with it. But it would probably appreciate it. The only reason I go quarter strength with the fertilizer is because I'm not trying to get the plant to grow too quickly because sometimes when we do that with Dracaenas and several other types of plants, you can end up with some skinny, leggy, stretched out growth. I want this to do what it wants to do, what it feels it should be doing, and just provide the nutrients necessary for it to do that. But I'm not necessarily trying to push it to grow even faster. Does that make sense? And in winter, of course, no fertilizer, because I also, I barely water it during the winter time, just it gets splashed occasionally. I always make sure when the plant's inside and there's not much airflow, that no water's collecting there in the center of the plant, because that can lead to rot just other diseases and unsightly foliage. Just a good thing to avoid. Though they do flower and produce seed. It's probably more common to propagate these from cuttings. As a house plant, it's going to be a long time till this branches out to be able to take cuttings. If you've seen them in pots with branches on them, they look really neat. Here's something up there on the screen. That's, that's my goal is to get there someday. Hopefully in the next like decade. That'd be awesome. Everything I've been told from other people who are growing these and have grown them for a very long time as a house plant, as someone who's moving them in and out of the home, 
that it can take up to 15 years to get those branches on these. I don't want to talk about those. I'm circling back because I forgot to mention it. 15 years to get branches on these. Whereas if you live someplace where they can grow year round with that heat and precipitation and rich soil, that could be four or five. Yeah. Slow, steady growth. And actually this really hasn't even been growing that slowly. When I picked this up last summer, I want to say that the growing apex is right around here and now it's up there which isn't a lot, but considering it's a slow growing plant, that's pretty good. And I haven't done anything particularly special with it. Just been getting some water here and there. Oh, these leaf bases, let's pop right off. I don't pull them. I have before when it's just bothered me when there were an awful lot of them. But for the most part, if you just wait and you're very patient, they'll pop right off on their own. But I don't really like to do that. Not until they're ready to come off like that one right there is really loose. Don't have to put much pressure or pull very hard comes right off. And then I will be repotting this in the spring. It's time. I've had this one for just over about a year, year and a half now, and it's doing well, but I think it could be doing better. I really do want to maximize the growth without having to go overboard with liquid fertilizer. So I'll bump this up a pot size, maybe two in the springtime. That way it has all summer and early fall when it's warm out to reestablish its roots into that container. And I won't have to worry about rot with the, all the new soil around those roots in the winter time i don't think it would appreciate it not when it's indoors temperatures are cooler yeah it, that wouldn't go very well and the thing that i will be the most on top of when repotting this is making sure that the potting mix it goes in drains very sharply meaning that when the water hits the surface it goes right through there i want it to flush through fast very very quickly because the more quickly that soil drains the more i can water the plant and the more i can water the plant the more the plant's going to grow but if it holds on to moisture for too long takes a long time to dry out then well you can't water it as often i know you would think it doesn't make a difference but it does similar to with ponytail palms you can pop those up and barely water those things and they'll live for you may not thrive but they'll live for a pretty long time but if you pop them up into a mix that drains really fast you can water them more often without having to worry about rot from water more often without worrying about wrath and even more you get it so that mix i use will have a lot of grit to it a lot of gravel so it can drain really well i know people who live in really humid climates or just areas that rain an awful lot they will pot these up sometimes almost in like just a pure grit a pure gravelly type mix and just not even worry about the soil. a lot of potting mixes aren't technically even soil that's why we call them mixes because it's not really organic materials in them i mean peat is an organic material but it doesn't release much and it takes a long time to break down so it's not that different from growing something hydroponically it has a better holding potential for when you add things to it with the peats and with the coconuts but still it's not really soil so that's an option if you live someplace with lots of precipitation lots of humidity and you want to keep the plant outside where it's going to be exposed to all of that in a container then use a really, really gritty, gravelly mix. Maybe something you could pick up online that's made for cactus. That would that'd probably be a good idea. And if you live someplace bone dry, you don't really have to worry about that. You just pot it up in an all-purpose potting mix, probably, and it would likely be okay, as long as the pot drains well and it's not sitting in water. Another thing I really like about this plant is that it doesn't get, well, it does. It gets the brown tips, but it doesn't get the brown tips to the extreme that you get with the ponytail palms. Like, not at all. There's a little bit on there, but it's not very much. And this is old growth. So this is probably from last winter when it was inside. All of the growth that it's put out as it's been outside where things are more humid, nothing. They're fine. So with those ponytail palms, sometimes those brown tips will go up a few inches, which doesn't really bother me, but I know it bothers some people. I think the trunks are equally as neat looking. With ponytail palms, you get that giant foot, which is pretty neat. But with this, you get that fun cartoony, like Flintstone-y sort of trunk, which I think is just amazing. Overall, fun plant, been really easy to take care of. Not always the easiest to come by. I hope that that will change someday because as far as houseplants are concerned, this is a pretty good one. They like bright light, which most people should be able to give in their homes and you don't have to constantly water them. That makes a big difference and they don't seem to throw the fuss that a lot of other Dracaenas will throw when it comes to the humidity levels as far as like the browning on the foliage. At least that hasn't been my experience. It doesn't really seem to care what I do as long as it gets light and water. And it's been happy. Well, comment down below. Are you growing these? A lot of you I know are down in Florida and other tropical areas where these can be grown outdoors. 
How amazing is it being able to see these where you live when they're bigger with those trunks on them? All those fun wavy angles. And just say hi. I love talking to everybody. And tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. It's a care slash spotlight video. So we can all learn together, grow together, get down there in the comments, read what people have to say. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Well, that's a nice shot. I should have used that in the video. Maybe I will have overlaid it. Bye-bye.